Scientists at NASA Center for NEO Studies, see NEOs at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, have determined that there is no possibility that this object could impact Earth during the flyby next month. But they said the same shit about DA-14. On the 15th of February 2013, an unknown object exploded high above Chelyabinsk in Russia with 20 to 30 times the energy of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. The resulting shockwave left 1,500 people injured and over 7,000 buildings damaged. There is no chance that the asteroid is going to smash into us. Whoa, see, who writes this dumb shit? Like, if it's passing 0 0.044 lunar distances away from Earth, or like 11,000 miles, there's a teeny tiny chance it might smash into us. I mean, they haven't even seen this thing in three years. Stay cool. Thor News presents... Zoo! You're right, sir. Asteroids are close. Science alert. It's the name of the website that's printed the article. Okay, everybody, here are the facts. This teeny tiny asteroid is going to pass at a possible 11,000 miles to Earth. NASA guarantees you that it's not going to hit, and there's nothing to see here, nothing to worry about. So, of course, I've got like a 10, 20, 15 minute video on this subject because there's nothing to see here, nothing to talk about. That don't ever stop me. Asteroid Texas 68, where you do me and I owe you one, is estimated to be about 100 feet or 30 meters in diameter. By comparison, the asteroid that broke up in the atmosphere over Chelyabinsk, Russia, three years ago was approximately 65 feet or 20 meters wide. Remember, NASA didn't see that one either. If an asteroid the size of 2013 TX-68 were to enter Earth's atmosphere, it would likely produce an airburst with about twice the energy of the Chelyabinsk event. And a lot of it has to do with the angle that it enters Earth's atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? The angle determines the amount of drag and resistance it will meet. So a 30 meter wide asteroid passing Earth on March 5th might come so close that it will be visible in our sky. That sounds kind of scary. Making me freak out. Wait, before you freak out, there is no chance that the asteroid is going to smash into us. Whoa, see, who writes this dumb shit? Like, if it's passing 0 0.044 lunar distances away from Earth, or like 11,000 miles, there's a teeny tiny chance it might smash into us. I mean, they haven't even seen this thing in three years. Stay cool. So stick around. We've got a video message. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Party Dance Time. Here I am, back, talking about Asteroid Texas 68. And I felt it was a wonderful time to recover the story because there are two elements that are interesting. One is new and one is not. I don't remember a time when spaceweather.com, which gets their orbital distances from NASA's newest data. And I do not remember a time where space weather changed it and so a screen captured this like a month ago or so it had asteroid texas 68 passing by earth at a condition code 7 guesstimate of 1.3 lunar distances and a lunar distance is the distance from earth to the moon and they changed 1.3 lunar distances to 0 0.044 and that is fascinating there have been several times when i put up a near earth asteroid video before where i've accidentally put 0 0.02 and someone will say no Dumbass. It's point two. And I'll be like, okay, sorry. And I've done like two or three times. And I change it. Because apparently, anything with a point O oh can be mildly alarming. And so this has a point O oh four four. And now, some reports are saying, hey, it's so close, we might even be able to see it pass by in the sky with your naked eyes. Now that's crazy, huh? Right now, we're at NASA's JPL Near Earth Object Close Approach List. Just kind of checking out the traffic. It's going to be passing by. Hold on, let me crunch some numbers. Biatch! I like how on Comet 31P Soho, its size is not available. Because do we ever really know the true size of a comet? And what's weird is if you go to the NASA lunar distance site level, they've got it listed at 1.3. So I was wrong. It's rare that space weather corrects NASA. But hey, here we go. Space weather. NASA has been corrected. That's hilarious. Science alert. It's the name of the website that's printed the article. You see, next month, an asteroid will pass so close to Earth, we might see it in the sky. And that's, that's wonderful. Hey, cool. Let's all go out, drink beer, and watch a asteroid harmlessly, asterisk, 
passed by in the upper sky. NASA has announced that a 30-meter wide asteroid passing Earth on March 5th might come so close that it will be visible in our sky. There is no chance that the asteroid is going to smash into us. Whoa, see, who writes this dumb shit? Like, if it's passing 0 .044 lunar distances away from Earth, or like 11,000 miles, there's a teeny tiny chance it might smash into us. I mean, they haven't even seen this thing in three years. I fully expect any future observations to reduce the probability even more, said Paul Chode Ass, manager of the CNEOs. Right now, I mean, they haven't even seen this thing in three years. Yeah, that's right. They haven't found it in a while. Even NASA admits that. So how can they be so sure that no space rock ever bumped into that space rock? The space agency is still determining its exact trajectory. Did you even read what you wrote, man? Oh, Fiona. Ma'am, if they are still determining its exact trajectory, then I would say chances are still up and open. But at the closest estimate, it'll be 18,000 kilometers or 11,000 miles away as it passes by us, which would make it easily viewable with the help of a telescope. And I'm sure some of you eagle-eyed people out there could see it with your naked eye. To put all this in perspective, that's roughly 1 20th the distance from Earth to the moon. Hey, did y'all know there's a Chinese rover on the moon? Sage tells me that all the time. Alternatively, the asteroid could travel further afield and pass us at a distance of around 9 million miles. That doesn't sound like they got that orbit nailed down. Now, does it? If you went to a lawyer and said, Hello, I'd like you to represent me for this case. Can you give me a cost estimate on how much that would be? And the lawyer said, Well, yeah, I crunched some numbers, and I can tell you the exact range. I can charge you anywhere between $11,000 or $9 million. You cool with that range, buddy? And I'd be like, wow, that's a pretty wide estimate. I guess you're not an expert at estimating how much it'll cost, because there's a giant gap in maybes. It's like 8.9 million maybes, man. So, oh, hey, we got an explanation. The reason for the big difference in these two estimates is that NASA only discovered the asteroid three years ago. What? What? Let me read that again, because that sounded really dumb. The reason for the big difference in these two estimates is that NASA only discovered this asteroid three years ago. And we haven't had much time to observe it just yet. Uh, is this your first story on asteroids, ma'am? I mean, I'm like the leader and founder of Asteroid Fight Club. And to say that NASA doesn't have a grip on things because they've only had three years to study it. I can't tell if that's a passive-aggressive slap across the face of NASA or you're saying that they're really not that good at stuff so it takes them a long, 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 long time to do it. Oh, that, that seems weird because usually when NASA's like, yeah, we need to look at it four times and we've got its orbit locked down to condition code zero. We've got its orbit locked down to condition code zero because we are asteroid pros. No? Okay. When it was first spotted, it was approaching Earth on the night side of the planet. Oh. But after three days of tracking, the asteroid moved into the daytime sky so it could no longer be monitored. <sighs> In that short period of time, scientists have been able to roughly map its possible trajectories. But there's a slight margin of error. I guess what? Light cannot escape from black holes. There's water on Mars. Light can escape from black holes. And there's still water on Mars. Hey, believe this. Boom, big bang, dark matter, ding-dongs. The moon's too expensive. <laughs>